Hey guys, this is Mr. Herbst here, and today's focus is going to be on genetic engineering. Now, those are two pretty big words, but actually they are an umbrella of different types of gene modifications we can do, such as cloning, such as stem cell research, or genetically modified crops. You may have heard of GMOs in the news. They get a lot of news time these days. But the first thing we're going to go and focus on is cloning. Haven't you ever kind of wish that you could have a clone of yourself, do all your homework for you while you went out skateboarding or watching TV or something like that? But here's something actually interesting to think about. Isn't a clone of you actually still a human being? And if you force that person to do other things for you, isn't that kind of a form of slavery? Just something to think about. So what is cloning? Well, cloning is the creation of an organism that is exactly genetically a copy of another. So for example, uh, one of the first things that us human beings ever cloned was a sheep uh, named Dolly. This was the mother and this was actually, it looks like the, the mother's baby, but actually that was an exact clone. And so uh, this means that every single bit of the DNA between mother and daughter was exactly the same. Now one common misconception is that clones are magically the exact same age or they are cloned to be the exact same age as the original. That's not true actually. The clone actually has to develop from an embryo much like how you had to develop from an embryo. And also that clone is going to grow up in a different environment at a different time. For Think about it like this. If I was to clone myself my clone would have to grow up from an embryo. Now, I'm in my 20s, and my clone would be an embryo now. So by the time I'm 40, my clone is going to be in their teens. And so we're talking about two different generations of human beings there. So they're going to be exposed to different environmental things. Um, another thing that you can think about is if you know a set of identical twins, if maybe you're friends with a set of identical twins, do they behave exactly the same? The answer is probably no. And actually, the thing that we're focusing on when we talk about cloning is their DNA. It just so happens that their DNA is genetically identical. So why do we clone? You know, cloning sort of has a negative connotation with it. But uh, if you think about it, cloning would allow us to revive endangered or extinct species. In fact, Japan right now is working on a program to revive the woolly mammoth, which actually has been extinct for the past 10,000 years or so. It would also, cloning would also allow us to uh, cure certain medical disorders that we can use. Uh, now we can use stem cell research where, uh, for example, uh, Christopher Reeve, who played the original Superman, he was a big advocate of stem cell research. He had a, uh, an accident that destroyed his spinal cord in his neck. And with stem cell research, we could actually help to regrow the missing parts of that severed spinal cord and allow, allow somebody like Christopher Reeve, who was paralyzed, to walk again. It also allows us to farm or create certain drugs. Um, and also, it allows us to reproduce that deceased pet, uh, that loved pet of ours. I kind of want you guys to stop and think, you know, should gene cloning sort of be allowed? If you think about it, we are actually playing with nature. Is that something that we want to kind of do? You know, ultimately, if we play with nature enough, what actually becomes natural at that point? What actually is nature? What actually is natural? But on the other hand, we can have lots and lots of benefits by messing around with genes. My next focus is going to be on gene therapy. The word therapy should sort of be a buzzword for actually what gene therapy is. Therapy is sort of like medicine. You know, if you go to a physical therapist, they're trying to help your leg get better or your arm get better. Well, gene therapy is where we use genes to treat or prevent certain diseases. Uh, now, why do we go ahead and do gene therapy? Why do we do these kind of things? Well, if you think about it, we can replace a mutated gene that causes a disease with a healthy copy. We can inactivate or knock out certain mutated genes that don't function properly. Or we can introduce a new gene into an organism to help fight disease. So, for example, if I had a genetic disorder such as a muscular dystrophy, if we could find out what actual gene is causing me to have muscular dystrophy, which is a disorder that makes my muscles not work anymore, 
If we could find that gene, we could go ahead and knock it out or take it out. And thus, I wouldn't be affected by muscular dystrophy anymore. So the benefits could be substantial. Another thing that's very similar to gene therapy is genetic enhancement. Uh, the word enhancement right here should sort of be a buzzword for kind of what it is. Well, if, if you enhance something, you sort of like make it better or make it bigger or something like that. Genetic enhancement refers to the transfer of genetic material intended to change non-life-threatening human traits. So how is it different exactly than, gene than gene therapy? Well, genetic enhancement seeks to change human cosmetically uh, well, gene therapy is used to treat diseases. For example, if I could implant a gene into me or in, uh, do something that would change my genes to make me super strong, that would be a genetic enhancement. But once again, if I was to try to get rid of that muscular dystrophy or to treat my muscular dystrophy, that is gene therapy. So some examples of genetic enhancements where we can use gro human growth hormone to increase muscle mass or increase height. We can use hormones to delay the aging process, so ultimately people could live for a lot longer. We can introduce genetic mutations that increases uh, your, your athletic ability, and we could also make you smarter. These don't actually treat diseases, but they actually enhance the way that we live. So hopefully you're kind of seeing the difference. Genetic therapy, once again, is to treat diseases. Enhancements is to, some, is to make a human being better at being a human being. My next focus is going to be on sexual selection, where we actually use methods to predetermine the sex of a baby. So ultimately, it's like you get to choose whether or not you want to have a boy or a girl. And uh, those are one of the things we can, we can use genes to sort of manipulate whether or not uh, a woman it gives birth to a boy or gives birth to a a girl. Now, one thing I kind of want you guys to think about is what would what would be the benefit of being giving birth to a boy or a girl instead of, say, the natural process? Well, we've been focusing a lot in class about how uh, we can have certain sex-linked genetic disorders. One of the ones we focused on is hemophilia, where it's way more common in men than girls. So, if we sort of knew the the that parents had hemophilia or ha or parents were uh, a woman was a carrier for hemophilia we could sort of select so that that baby was born a girl and thus giving it less chance of having hemophilia but also I want you guys to kind of think about is that sort of a ethnic or a natural thing to do anyway guys this is genetic engineering this is Mr. Herbst I'm signing off folks y'all have a nice day